Geek here. Welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to the 2021 New Year's Eve q and I got it right, hey! So obviously you ask questions on my Christmas haul video, I got the answers. I mean, this is a tradition, you know, third time running. Kicking off with the age-old question, have you seen Die Hard? And if so, do you consider it a Christmas movie? I saw it recently and yes, it is a Christmas film. You know, we've got Christmas songs in it. There's this Christmas tree in the background. John McClane is flying home for Christmas to see his family. That's a, you know, Christmassy thing you do. And you know, it's symbolic, you see, because the tower, it's like a tree. And when Bruce Willis, when he jumps off it after it explodes at the top, he's like an angel falling from the heavens. It's supported further by the fact that he's wearing a white vest, you know, like an angel. And it's further supported that Alan Whitman is essentially playing Krampus. So Which British car do you fancy, or do you prefer cars from some place else, or perhaps not even care about cars at all? I mean, I'm not massively focused on cars, like specific brands of cars, I'm not, I don't really, I don't know, I mean, I mean I, I'd like a car when I'm older, when I can learn to drive, obviously. I just remember when I was younger, I used to always want a Fiat 500 as like my first car, like when I learned to drive, I want a Fiat 500, probably because we used to have one, but it's like always a small car to start off with. I mean, I can see that logic behind it, but of all the cars in the world, you want a Fiat 500? Do Brits go crazy with fireworks on New Year's Eve the way people in Germany, Netherlands and the rest of the mainland. I um, mean, you do have fireworks, yeah. I mean, not everyone celebrates New Year's Eve, but you do tend to have fireworks. Do you have any big plans for New Year's Eve? No, I'm after this, I'm uh, probably gonna go have me tea. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really celebrate New Year's Eve and New Year's. The only thing really is like just staying up till midnight, recording a video of me saying Happy New Year. I'll send it out to every all my friends and just, and then just go to bed and then just, I don't know. In America, a lot of people traditionally eat a feast of baked ham with lots of sides dishes on New Year's Day. I've I messed that up then. The Pennsylvania Dutch who are of German descent eat pork, sal sauerkraut and mashed potatoes for good luck. Do people in your area have a traditional meal that they usually eat on New Year's Day? I mean, people do tend to have like, some people do tend to have like meals. Um, I think sometimes people will have like the leftovers of Christmas dinner, if I'm not mistaken. I think some people do that. But that, I don't think it's really like a set thing in the UK at least. I don't, uh, like there is with Christmas, you know, you tend to have like turkey and potatoes and oh crap, you know, you, you tend to have those things at Christmas. With New Year's there's not really a set thing that you have. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? Try and be optimistic, try and be more optimistic. I mean also I was actually, you know, laying in my bed last night and I was just thinking about the good things that will come in 2022 and it put me in a pretty good mood actually so it works. Who was the Doctor when you started watching? Would you say that the Matt Smith era was your zenith of Doctor Who? It would actually be the Peter Capaldi era, because Capaldi was my first Doctor. Series 10 was my first series, obviously. Um, I've said that in the past before, but yeah. The Peter Capaldi era. When do you anticipate that you'll get around to watching Terminator and then T2 Judgment Day? By the way, I watched T2 twice this week. I mean, good for you. I mean, I'm really looking forward to T2 especially, but I'm hoping at, like, in January at some point... Merry Christmas, Clacker, great hall. Thanks, right? Okay, Ryan Who now, his questions. Opinions on the Web Planet. No! God, please, no! No! Web Planet is god-awful. It's just terrible. What's your favourite Hartnell story? It, for me, it's the War Machines. It's a really good modern-day Earth story at the time of the 60s, but it's a really good story. I love the War Machines and Monsters, like an AI gone wrong kind of thing. It's, it's brilliant. Do you play video games? Not that much, to be honest. I'm not a massive gamer, although recently I have been playing a bit of Lego DC Super Villains, just on a whim. I just put it on. I was like, oh, it's pretty fun. I mean, I used to love the Lego games as a kid, so there's that. Who's the worst Doctor Who companion? Either Clara, because she drives me up the wall, or Ryan, because other than the two Dalek specials, he's about as interesting as watching paint dry. Okay, we've got Mr. R Productions. Hi, Clack, I've been a while. Here's my questions if I'm still in time. You are. I know you're going on a hiatus as well for YouTube as well, so take care as well. Have you seen the new Spider-Man? Man, it was good. Um, obviously, I know you've been away from YouTube for a little bit and you're going to be away, but... Yes, I have seen Spider-Man, uh, I did a review of it, but it was absolutely amazing. And fittingly, your next question, what's been your favourite new movie of 2021? Spider-Man No Way Home. Although my other favourites were The Suicide Squad and No Time to Die. You ever seen The Matrix and if so, what, have you seen the new one? I tried watching the first first Matrix film on like a lazy weed day a few months ago. And I, it's, I think that's a film you've got to be in the mood for, a bit like, say, Seven, that's an example. I mean, I did watch that and it's an amazing film. But it's one you've got to be in the mood for. I don't think you could just whack it on after a busy day of school and whatnot. So I, I haven't watched it. I will at some point, though. How have you been? Haven't spoken in a while since I've become disconnected. So how are you all holding up? Um, I mean, as I say, as I said in the New Year video that I did, I was kind of... No, I mean, look, I'm not depressed. I just need to get that out of the way. And I didn't mean to... If I did come off as, like, maybe 
bit whiny or pedantic or ungrateful. I didn't mean that because I mean obviously there's people going through way worse in the world than way way worse in the world than me. But I'm just more, more exhausted at this point. You know, there's been so much that's happened that is quite overwhelming, both in like the general sense and in personal lives. It's it's it does get quite overwhelming, and I think that's what's happened to me. We've got Mario Bowser for Online 4. I hope you had a great Christmas. I did at Best Ones 2017. I hope you don't have to wait four years for another great Christmas then because I hope you have a great Christmas next year, um, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, etc, etc. Top 5 Christmas films and why? Okay, Die Hard, it's a brilliant film. Uh, not only is it a, uh, is a Christmas film, yeah, but it's just a great uh, action movie, isn't it? Love Actually, I know I'm not usually into rom-coms, but it's a really good like British film. It's that kind of vibe that I gel with. Elf, it's just balls to the wall crazy and I love it. Muppets Christmas Carol, it's the best version of Christmas Carol that I've seen at least. And my favourite, Arthur Christmas. It's a 2011 animated film by Aardman and Sony, but it's absolutely fantastic. It really ignited like a sort of childlike wonder that I've not I've not felt in for years. Really, it's it was something special. Favorite holiday? I'm gonna go with Christmas because it's Christmas, isn't it? Favorite collection of box set cover? I mean, I do love the season 17 one, the greens and oranges. I think it is fantastic, but I always go out to the season 18 one. Because it was, I mean, it was my first box set, but it's just the one that drew me to the box sets. I just think it's a fantastic cover. What do you think is the Doctor Who story that you've rewatched the most for whatever reason? Uh, there's a few that would be there. Part of the Ways, specifically Part of the Ways, not Bad Wolf, but um, Part of the Ways. I've watched that about five or six times, and it is, it never gets off me. I love it. It's one of my favourites of all time. There's a few from Series 10 that I've watched plenty, like the pilot. And the finale, World Enough of Time, Doctor Falls, I've watched them a lot. The Rings of Aka 10, I've watched that one about five or six times, I think. Brilliant stuff. What's your favourite 60s Who season? I mean, if we're going to go, I'm going to go for Doctor. So for Heart, and I say season two, there's just a really warm feeling that I have when watching those stories, you know, with the Tardis team and just the stories anyway. Then for Troughton, I'd go season five, which is my favourite overall of the 60s. It's just a fantastic season. Classic, after classic, after classic. There's something really magical about 60s Doctor Who, isn't there? What's your favourite big finish that you've heard? I mean, I've got I've gone through my big finish collection. I've got a few here. The Juggernauts, it's first big finish. Well, not not my first, but the one that properly got me into it. Two Masters, that was a really good listen. Uh, that was a great one. And then some of the Eighth Doctor stuff that I've listened to. Um, I love uh, Paul McGann is, is fantastic, and these big finishes do do him justice. Favorite Christmas dinner food items. Okay, so usually what I do for Christmas dinner is it's like a you all stand a roast dinner, you have a meat, you have um, potato, you have roast potatoes, some vegetables, Yorkshire pudding. You have that, but on steroids. And the, the, the steroids in this analogy is pigs in blankets, which is essentially sausage and bacon put together. And it's the nicest thing ever. Favourite 13th Doctor New Year special? Um, I was, I was saying resolution, because I do really like, I really like resolution. But I remember survival part one, that was... That was on New Year's Day as well, so Sparkle Part 1, I think it is really fun, and I think it still holds up well. Revolution of the Daleks, though, that's... Um, not, I'm not so keen on that one. I'm going to give it a rewatch, um, but it's not, not... I'm not as fond of it as it used to be. Your best New Year that you ever had, probably 2020, actually, because, I mean, it was, you know, peak happiness, pretty much, of me. Obviously, Sparkle was on, that was then. And also, we didn't know what COVID was, so another bonus, it was just... You know, a happy time. Chris Cagle, uh, what are some of your Doctor Who highlights this year? Just stuff that's gone on Who related that got you excited. Um, Well, Flux, I don't care if you like it or not. The experience of it was so much fun. I, I, I enjoyed Flux. I thought it was really fun. RTD returning, that's another uh, no-brainer. Um, Evil of the Daleks animation um, and just the missing episode stuff in general. Collection box sets, you know, season 17, but also season 8 and 24. Really good stuff. Favourite sixth Doctor story, either Attack of the Cybermen, because it's my first Doctor story ever, or maybe Revelation of the Daleks. Favourite seventh Doctor story, it's a cliche answer I know, but Remembrance of the Daleks, it's it's ace, isn't it? Least favourite big finish, I, I, I again I went through them all and I picked this one. Legacy of Death, it's a Tom Baker one, um, it was the first one I ever listened to, but uh, I was not engaged in it at all, can't remember a thing from this, apparently it's part of the story arc, so that helps, and kind of put me off listening to Big Finish, I was just like, for a couple of years, so, yeah. Overrated classic season, you put me in the spot there, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, with seasons, I can pick some overrated classic stories, That that's easy, you know. 
Ghost of Paladon, the Tenth Planet, Talents of Wing Chiang, maybe. I mean, there's not many, but with Classic Q, I don't think there's a season that I could call overrated. I mean, some underrated, definitely. You know, season 11 is underrated, season 16, season 18, season 22, they're underrated, but I don't think I could say an overrated season. If you were casting the Ron in the Revived Era of Doctor Who, who would it be and why? Uh, I don't know. Um, I haven't really thought about it because I don't really um, been. I'm not overly fussed on the Rani, but if I had to, if I had to say maybe Fiona Shaw. Like she, I think she because she was in um, the Harry Potter movies as Harry's aunt Petunia, but and she's been a few other things as well. Killing Eve. She was in an episode of Inside Number Nine, and I thought she she was like the villain in that, and she was really good, quite sadistic. So maybe her, maybe her, yeah. If you're gonna put each new Who Doctor with a monster from Classic Who, what would it be? I mean, there's definitely monsters I want to come back, like the Sea Devils. I want them to come back, and maybe they could go with Capaldi then, because he's the most classicy Doctor. Maybe they could go together. I think ten with the Vok robots, because you know, in Voyage of the Damned, I think that was meant to have the Vok robots originally. All they like, it's very similar, so it could work. Matt Smith, uh, maybe Omega, that'd be cool. Eccleston and Eccleston the War Machines. And then, uh, I know this one, Jody, the 13th Doctor, with Chumblies from Galaxy 4. Final question from Toby Coleman. Are there any episodes that you've seen this year that your thoughts have changed on? I mean, the main one for me is Daleks in Manhattan and Evolution of the Daleks, that series 3 2 parter. I used to really not like it, but now I do. I think it's really fun. It's flawed, but it's very fun, and I think there's a lot to like in it. But other stories that have, there's a few other stories, Terror of the Autons, I used to not be so keen on that, but now I, I really like it. I think it's pretty good. And there's some other stories that I, I haven't like rewatched, but I think on them and they're not as good as I remembered. So Shakespeare Code, that one's gone down. Fugitive of the Jadoon, that one's gone down a bit. Same for Revolution of the Daleks. I mean, I did technically watch that this year, but, but it tends to be like I'll think about it. But sometimes a rewatch does help that. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for everyone who asking questions. Great stuff. Um, I don't know how to end this video. Like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you all in 2022. Ta-ta.